there, my name is Amy, and today I'll be talking about forensic fiber analysis. Fiber analysis is a method of identifying different fibers through various examinations and tests. In this video, I will discuss different types of hair and fiber evidence that may be taken from a crime scene, a victim, or a suspect. Fibers are often collected using tweezers or a vacuum. Tape can also be used, but the adhesive can sometimes be destructive to the evidence. For today, I will be using a lint roller just for the sake of demonstration. I'm going to hand this to my assistant so that they can collect some fibers from your clothing. Afterwards, if you wouldn't mind stepping forward so that you can watch me make some microscope slides, that would be awesome. All right, here we go. Yeet! The first thing we need to do is make microscope slides for our fiber samples. Today, I will choose three fibers from the lint roller sheet and make three slides to observe. I will first put a drop of water on my slide, then select a fiber to place within it and cover it with a cover slip. The water will help light pass through the specimen more evenly. If the fiber is too long for the microscope slide, you can cut it to better fit. Now the types of fibers that we can expect to find at a crime scene are human hair, animal hair, plant fibers, and synthetic fibers. These different fibers have distinct visual differences and different properties when introduced to fire and dyes. In this demonstration, we will be focusing on the visual differences through the use of microscopic magnification. All right, so we're gonna start with sample one. We're just gonna put it on our microscope stage and we'll make sure it's centered over the light by moving the stage around a little bit. There we go. So now to really see our sample, we're gonna start moving the stage up with the coarse adjustment knob. That's the big knob on the microscope. And we move it until we find a sample. There we go. Let's put that more into the middle here. That's a nice sample there too. Awesome. Okay, so we use the smaller knob called the fine adjustment knob to focus in a little bit better. Now that's some pretty cool detail. Let me see if I could show you some more of it. Going this way. Now that's a really cool piece right there. That looks like a root, in which case this is a hair fiber of some sort. So we'll get a little bit of a closer look so that we can see what type of hair fiber it might be. And to do that, you just turn the nose of your microscope to the next magnification. And use the small knob again to sharpen that magnification. There we go. Nice and sharp. And to get an even better look, you can turn it up to the highest magnification. Center your object a little bit. to get a look at that root. That root looks really cool. And sharpen it up. Sometimes it takes just playing with the knobs a little to get where you want it to go. There we go. So I'm going to move down the hair shaft a little so that you guys can see some different features of this hair shaft. So with this close of a magnification, you can see some really neat things if you play with the fine adjustment knob. You can see that there is a cuticle on the outside of the hair. You can also see that there is a line in the middle called the medulla. We know that by the shape of the medulla and the cuticles, this is likely a human hair. Now let me show you a few samples of some of the other types of hairs that we could find when doing a forensic fiber analysis. Our second sample that you can see here, it's got little spiky pieces on it. It also has a darker color, and when you look at the middle where the cortex and the medulla are, you can see that it's most likely a dog hair. Now our other sample, the third sample we took, you can see by looking at it that it doesn't have a cuticle. It's very straight, very uniform. This fiber is most likely a synthetic fiber. It also has a green color, which indicates that it was something that was either dyed or colored in some way. Through further analysis, the assumptions we've made regarding the identities of the fiber samples can be confirmed. 
Fiber samples may also be compared with other known samples in order to determine the likelihood that the fibers came from the same source. This could potentially act as supporting evidence to place someone at a crime scene. This does not implicate guilt, however, as more of the hidden story can be told through further forensic analysis.